Jupiter, the most extreme planet in the solar system. If you are looking for a planet that is completely different than the Earth, Jupiter is where you're going to go. Jupiter is a turbulent world of monster magnetic fields and endless megastorms. Jupiter has storms so large they could eat the Earth whole. Generations of astronomers have tried to solve the mysteries of Jupiter. Finally, NASA's Juno probe is revealing new evidence that unlocks why this planet is so savage. With Juno, we're able to see Jupiter from the inside out. Jupiter turned out to be nothing like what we expected. What mysterious energy drives Jupiter's eternal storms? And what powers the biggest magnetic field of any planet in the solar system? We plunge into Jupiter's atmosphere and reach deep into its core to reveal how it grew into the solar system's fiercest planet and investigate whether this alien megaworld even unlocks the origins of life on Earth. One planet in our solar system dwarfs all the rest. Jupiter. Made almost entirely of hydrogen and helium, Jupiter's mass is 1,300 times greater than Earth. When it comes to the planets in our solar system, really the story is all about Jupiter. Add up all the masses, 70% is in that one planet alone. Jupiter isn't just big, it is also extreme. Jupiter has a magnetic field so powerful that it tears away charged particles from its moons to make supersized aurorae at the poles. The temperature at the center of the planet is 41,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than the surface of the sun. Astronomers have studied Jupiter for centuries, but its biggest mysteries still confound them. Why is Jupiter so extreme? What are the hidden processes that drive the planet's ferocity? Three, two, one, ignition and liftoff of the Atlas V with Juno on a trek to Jupiter. In 2011, NASA launches mission Juno to unlock these mysteries. The Juno probe carries a suite of super-advanced instruments, a particle detector, infrared and ultraviolet imaging, and a magnetometer to peer deeper into Jupiter than ever before. You can only learn so much about a planet by looking at it through a telescope. Sometimes you just have to go there. And so Juno is a payload of some of the most advanced instrumentation that we've ever sent into the void of space. And it took this epic journey to Jupiter, this incredibly distant planet. Juno arrives at Jupiter in 2016. The probe's onboard camera beams back to Earth, spectacular images of the surface of this mega planet. Juno gets so close and sees it in such detail that I've seen images of this planet that I didn't even recognize as being Jupiter. The color palette of Jupiter is beyond belief. All of these oranges and reds and deep browns and yellows. I have to sometimes remind myself that I'm looking at a planet because it's just so beautiful. I've never seen astronomical images like these before. These swirling bands look tranquil from orbit, but it's a different story up close. These bands are actually giant storms. They're jet streams, many times faster than the jet streams on Earth. And not only that, they're going in different directions, one cloud band going against the other one. The largest of Jupiter's storms is the famous Great Red Spot. But a riddle remains for Juno to solve. What powers the planet's mega winds and superstorms? Astronomers believe 
that measuring the depth of the storm bands on Jupiter could reveal the source of the mysterious energy that drives them. The sun powers the weather here on Earth. Its radiation penetrates the Earth's atmosphere and heats the surface of our planet. It is this heat that drives the range of weather we experience. Traditional telescopes cannot see through the colorful swirling bands wrapped around Jupiter. So astronomers cannot tell exactly what source of energy drives Jupiter's extreme weather. Juno uses Jupiter's own gravity to measure exactly how far the storm bands reach into the gas giant. The density of the storm bands affects Jupiter's gravity. This gravity changes Juno's velocity as it passes over the planet. Denser areas with stronger gravity pull the probe inwards. Areas of weaker gravity release it outwards. By plotting the shifts in Juno's orbit, scientists build up a super accurate density map of Jupiter. Scientists can gauge the true size of storms raging through the planet's atmosphere by measuring Juno's speed. As Juno moves around Jupiter, we can measure tiny changes in its velocity, and those depend on changes of the mass of the planet underneath it. So by measuring the speed of Juno as it travels, we're actually seeing the different masses of the different storm bands on Jupiter. The more massive a storm band is, the deeper it extends into Jupiter. The measurements that Juno takes reveal that these bands reach 1,800 miles into the planet. What Juno is showing us is that these things go very, very deep, surprisingly deep. The huge depth of the storm bands is an important clue in solving the mystery of what drives the extreme weather on Jupiter. Here on Earth, the weather is controlled by energy from the sun. That's what powers it. Jupiter is five times farther away from the sun than the Earth is, and its atmosphere is super thick. So it can't be energy from the sun that's powering all these storms. What is the mysterious source of energy that powers Jupiter's megastorms? And how does this gas giant produce the largest magnetic field of any planet in the solar system? Jupiter is the biggest and most extreme world in our solar system. NASA's Juno probe reveals that Jupiter's megastorms stretch 1,800 miles into the planet. But the sun is too far away for its energy to power winds this deep. The immense energy that has to be powering these incredible storms can't be coming from outside Jupiter. It has to be coming from within it. So what could that energy source be? Researchers in Marseille, France, run innovative laboratory experiments to find out. This tank holds 130 gallons of water and tens of thousands of fluorescent plastic beads. These beads represent the gas in Jupiter's thick atmosphere. The researchers spin the tank to mimic Jupiter's rotation. Powerful pumps at the bottom of the tank blast the water. This simulates energy that radiates from inside Jupiter. A camera tracks the precise movement of the beads. The beads arrange into alternately spinning bands. And these bands are very deep, just like the real storm bands on Jupiter. The researchers believe these results show that a huge concentration of heat energy inside Jupiter could be what is driving the planet's extreme weather. Astronomers think that the way Jupiter forms four and a half billion years ago unlocks why the planet is so hot. A disk of gas and dust 
surrounds the newborn sun in the early solar system. This is where protoplanets form. Gravity brings together vast amounts of matter to form the core of a proto-Jupiter. The young planet captures vast amounts of hydrogen and helium gas. This cranks up the pressure inside it. The weight of the gas pushes Jupiter's inner pressure to over 20 million times that of a car tire. This pressure superheats the planet's core. Astronomers believe this supersized hot core unlocks the mystery of why the weather on Jupiter is so extreme. Reaching deep inside Jupiter reveals how the planet's superheated center drives its violent weather. In the core, temperatures reach 41,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than the surface of the sun. The heat radiates to Jupiter's outer layers and vast convection currents. These warm the atmosphere from the inside out. They drive roaring winds in the cloud tops and create Jupiter's iconic storm bands. The interior of Jupiter is very hot. This is actually heat left over from its formation 4.6 billion years ago. Because Jupiter is the most massive, the biggest planet in the solar system, it has the most amount of heat available to power these gigantic storms. Jupiter's super hot core unlocks the mystery of what powers the largest storms in the solar system. But Jupiter has more puzzles to solve. NASA's pioneering Juno probe carries a special infrared camera. It sees parts of Jupiter that are invisible to other types of camera. It captures this mysterious image. The picture shows a huge aurora at Jupiter's south pole. It is larger than the size of the Earth. We knew Jupiter had aurorae. We've seen these using Hubble. What Juno showed us is the size and scale and power of Jupiter's aurora. They are far larger and far more powerful, far brighter than anything we've ever seen on Earth. Aurorae occur on Earth when charged particles from the sun slam into our planet's magnetic field. Some of these charged particles, called ions, funnel down towards the Earth's north and south poles. The result is a spectacular light show like the Aurora Borealis. The sun is too far away from Jupiter for its ions to create the aurora that Juno sees. Instead, the ions come from Jupiter's fiery moon, Io. Io is the most volcanic body in the solar system. And it's also a small body. So when it erupts, not all the volcanic material falls back on Io. Some of it goes into orbit around Jupiter, and some of it actually follows Jupiter's magnetic field lines and collides with Jupiter's atmosphere at the poles, causing aurora. Jupiter's supersized aurora means that the planet must have a supersized magnetic field. And this creates a big mystery for planetary scientists to solve. Planets like Earth have a churning ball of molten metal at their core. This moving liquid metal acts like a dynamo. It generates a magnetic field that stretches out into space. Jupiter is a gas giant made almost entirely from hydrogen. Scientists believe that it contains no vast reservoir of liquid metal. So what inside Jupiter creates the planet's mega magnetic field? And why does this gas giant have not two poles, but three? NASA's pioneering Juno probe 
confirms that Jupiter has the largest magnetic field of any planet in the solar system. Jupiter is made almost entirely of hydrogen gas. So what inside Jupiter acts like a dynamo to create the planet's mega magnetic field? Scientists at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory believe that the huge pressure deep inside Jupiter unlocks the mystery. Here, they use powerful lasers to simulate how this pressure changes gases into weird new states of matter. The scientists trap a sample of hydrogen in a chamber and then focus their lasers onto it. This creates shock waves that for a few billionths of a second, simulate the extreme pressure inside Jupiter. The atoms in the hydrogen are squeezed together so tightly that its properties change beyond recognition. The hydrogen transforms from a clear gas into a substance that reflects light, a telltale sign that it now behaves like a metal. Scientists believe that a similar superpressurized form of hydrogen exists inside Jupiter. In the interior of Jupiter, there are incredible forces pressing everything together. So in the case of all those hydrogen atoms, they're crushed so close together, they begin to share electrons. That's the definition of a metallic bond, and that means it can conduct electricity. This weird type of metallic hydrogen solves the mystery of what generates the planet's supersized magnetic field. Materials that conduct electricity can generate magnetic fields. And Jupiter's massive size means that it could contain a vast reservoir of this bizarre form of hydrogen. Deep inside Jupiter lies an ocean of shiny metallic holes charged particles from these moons to Jupiter's poles. These particles slam into the planet to create Jupiter's spectacular aurorae. Jupiter's super-powerful magnetic field creates one of the most stunning light displays in the solar system. Juno carries a magnetometer as part of its suite of super-sensitive instruments. The magnetometer creates the first detailed map of Jupiter's massive magnetic field. This data reveals something extraordinary. Jupiter's supersized magnetic field is a mess. We've known for a while that Jupiter has a tremendously strong magnetic field, but until Juno got closer, we had no idea how chaotic it is. Juno shows that Jupiter's magnetic field points outwards from the planet's North Pole and inwards to its South Pole. But a portion of its magnetic field rejoins Jupiter at a circular spot close to the giant planet's equator. It looks like Jupiter has not two poles, but three. Imagine going camping on Jupiter. How could you use a compass to get around when there's three poles? It just doesn't work. What mysterious process going on inside Jupiter creates this weird anomaly. The super sensitive instruments on board Juno reveal a clue. They show that many of the largest, most violent storms on Jupiter are near the planet's equator. Juno has revealed to us that Jupiter has many, many storms going on at all times. The most famous of which is the Great Red Spot, which has lasted for centuries. Jupiter's surface spins fastest at the equator. Juno measures wind speeds and some equatorial storms in excess of 300 miles per hour. Scientists believe that the winds inside these mega storms unlock the mystery of what produces Jupiter's weird magnetic field. 
1,800 miles beneath the surface of Jupiter is an ocean of metallic hydrogen. The winds raging across its surface are so powerful that they create fast moving currents in the liquid metal. These currents upset the balance of Jupiter's dynamo. They shift and shear the giant planet's mega magnetic field and create a third magnetic pole near the equator. Only on a planet so weird could super fast winds change a magnetic field the size of the sun. Every planet's magnetic field is a little strange. They all have their little quirks, but nothing like this has ever been seen. The data from Juno unlocks the mystery of Jupiter's weird shape-shifting magnetic field. Now the probe turns to solving more of the mega planet's mysteries. Why is the center of Jupiter a jumbled mix of gas and rock? And how does it unlock the birth of the largest planet in the solar system? Jupiter is the largest and most extreme planet in the solar system. NASA's Juno probe is on a mission to unlock its secrets. Juno's next objective is to reveal for the first time what lies at the center of Jupiter. Astronomers believe that a picture of what is happening at the heart of the planet will solve one of its biggest mysteries. How was Jupiter born? We really don't understand how gas giants like Jupiter formed. That is one of the prime mysteries that Juno is designed to help solve. Solving this puzzle rests on astronomers finding out if Jupiter has a core made from rock or a core made from gas. If the core is rocky, then that means that it formed like the other planets in the inner solar system form. Planets like Earth, smaller objects collided together and stuck together until you built up a planetary sized body. A core made from gas will tell an entirely different story of Jupiter's creation. It will be evidence that Jupiter was born through the collapse of a giant cloud of gas and dust in the early solar system. In that case, there really wouldn't be anything solid in the core at all. It'd be more like the sun. So the core was a big deal. What was the core like? Was it going to be solid? Was it going to be gaseous? Instruments on board Juno measure the shape and size of Jupiter's magnetic and gravitational fields to find out. Astronomers on Earth crunch this data to build up a detailed image of what lies at the heart of the mega planet. They discover that the interior of Jupiter is far stranger than anyone could have imagined. Jupiter's core is not exclusively rock or gas. It's a weird mixture of both. It seems to have a lot of rocky stuff and metal stuff, but it also has a lot of gassy stuff. So it's not like a distinct entity. It just sort of fades away with distance from the center. It's really just kind of fuzzy. Many astronomers think this new evidence indicates that Jupiter is born as a rocky planet. It then accumulates huge quantities of gas to grow to the size it is today. But what causes the rock and gas inside Jupiter to mix and make a fuzzy core? One theory is that a young Jupiter is involved in a cosmic crash. We think that there was once at least a solid mass of rock and metal in the core, but something has clearly stirred it up or even destroyed it and broken it up. What is the object that crashes into Jupiter and shatters the core of this mighty planet? Planetary scientists have a way to find out. They build models of the early solar system inside supercomputers. They then smash objects into virtual Jupiters 
to test what type of collision produces the fuzzy core that Juno sees. The researchers discover that just one scenario results in the weird mix of rock and gas at the center of the mega planet. Four and a half billion years ago, a rocky planet, 10 times more massive than Earth, heads straight for Jupiter. The planet collides head on it plows through the atmosphere towards the heart of Jupiter and smashes the rocky core at the center of the gas giant into billions of pieces. These fragments mix with the surrounding metallic hydrogen to make the weird fuzzy core that Juno detects. So the most likely culprit is a direct collision with Jupiter. Some other planet carrying an enormous amount of energy strikes the core of Jupiter like a bullet and injects that energy into the core of the planet itself. It deposits that energy and breaks up the core and that might be causing the so-called fuzziness that we see in the data. The theory works inside a computer simulation, but how is it possible in reality for Jupiter to collide with another planet? The answer could lie with alien worlds, light years away from Earth. Astronomers call them exoplanets. In 2017, astronomers discover a super strange exoplanet orbiting the star Kelt 9, 670 light years away from Earth. There was something truly extraordinary about the star Kelt 9. Kelt 9 had a dip in brightness every one and a half days. There was a planet close enough to the star, it went around every one and a half days. Not only that, it was a giant planet, over two times the mass of Jupiter. Astronomers named this weird world Kelt 9b. Kelt 9b is a gas giant like Jupiter, but it is 11 times closer to its star than Mercury is to our sun. Astronomers call these types of planets hot Jupiters. Kelt 9b is a super extreme planet. This is one of the hottest exoplanets that we've ever found. The atmosphere of that planet is hotter than the surface of most stars. Measurements from the Spitzer Space Telescope reveal that this extreme heat is ripping apart Kelt 9b. The heat from its star is blowing its atmosphere away like a comet. It's losing its atmosphere over time, which means that eventually it's all going to go away. And at some point in the future, all that's gonna be left is whatever core this planet has. Kelt 9b and other hot Jupiters are enigmas. The science says that these huge planets can't form this close to a star. To form a gas giant like Jupiter, you need really cold conditions, far from the host star, where icy materials can glue themselves together and accrete gas as the planet grows. So when we see these really hot Jupiters really, really close to the stars that they're orbiting, we know they can't have formed there. Kelt 9b must have moved towards its star after it forms in a colder region of space. How does this characteristic of hot Jupiters reveal why our Jupiter collides with another planet? And can an epic journey across the solar system solve the mystery of how Earth got its oceans? NASA's Juno probe discovers that the center of Jupiter is a weird mixture of rock and gas. Astronomers believe that a collision with another planet could explain this fuzzy core. Telescope observations reveal that Jupiter-like worlds and other parts of the galaxy move towards their stars. These journeys could solve the mystery of how our Jupiter collides with another planet. Four and a half billion years ago, Jupiter forms in a disk of gas and dust that surrounds the newborn sun. It forms early in a solar system that is a mess of rocks and planetary embryos. 
the gravity of the disk itself gradually, over a few million years, pulls Jupiter towards the Sun. Jupiter advances towards its star with every new orbit. As it moves inwards, Jupiter is a wrecking ball for everything in its path. When you look at the wonderfully stable solar system that we see today, it's almost impossible to imagine how violent and dramatic it was in the beginning. At this time, there were collisions left, right, and center. The solar system was very much a work in progress. Jupiter is on the fast track to becoming a hot Jupiter. One theory is that another planet comes to the rescue. So it seems now as if our solar system was headed towards some kind of unsalvageable disaster. Jupiter moving closer and closer in, disrupting orbits of planets as it went. Farther out in the disk, more giant planets began to form. And specifically Saturn, every time it orbited around, it gave Jupiter a little gravitational tug back into the outer parts of the solar system. The Jupiter we have today almost didn't exist. But luckily for it, Saturn formed close enough to it and its gravitational attraction slowed it down. So it saved it from the fate of moving in closer to the sun than Mercury even is and then getting boiled away. Many astronomers believe that Jupiter's journey towards and then away from the sun stirs up the protoplanets in our solar system. Some of them change places and switch orbits. The mayhem that Jupiter unleashes could explain how one such planet ends up on a collision course with the gas giant. Our early solar system was a chaotic and messy place, and Jupiter moving through it was a really big target. So there's a surprisingly high chance for Jupiter in the early solar system to collide with a massive body. Data from Juno unlocks the mysteries of Jupiter's early history. Scientists now think that Jupiter's migration is a defining event for our solar system. When you have a planet as massive as Jupiter moving through our early solar system, it's going to have some wild effects. How does Jupiter's journey shape the solar system that we know today? Jupiter is the largest, the most massive planet in the solar system. Clearly, it has profoundly affected everything else around it. The mystery is how, in detail, specifically, what did it do? A fuzzy core is evidence that Jupiter collides with a giant planet during an epic migration across the solar system. The gravity of Saturn pulls Jupiter back and saves the mega planet from becoming a hot Jupiter. Scientists think that this journey might unlock one of Earth's biggest mysteries. How did oceans form on our planet? Water is essential for all life on Earth. It covers 70% of our planet's surface. And yet, it actually has no business being here. The young Earth is born dry around four and a half billion years ago. Its close proximity to the sun means that lighter ingredients like water evaporate into space. If the Earth formed in its present location in the solar system, it was way too hot for all of this water to actually be part of the original planet. It had to come from somewhere else. Astronomers think that the source of water on Earth lies in a frozen region of space farther away from the sun. When the sun ignites, its heat creates a water-free zone around it. The Earth forms dry in this barren region of space. Further out, near Jupiter, orbit millions of asteroids. Here, it is cold enough for water to exist as ice. Water freezes inside the asteroids. They smash together to make bigger space rocks that contain vast amounts of water. 
enough to fill entire oceans if they were to hit Earth. But what sends them flying through space towards our planet? And is it possible that these rocks also contain the building blocks of life? Astronomers believe that a bombardment of water-rich asteroids billions of years ago seeds Earth's oceans. But what sends these space rocks flying towards our planet? A clue is locked inside meteorites. Meteorites are fragments of larger asteroids in space that break away and fall to Earth. The tiny grains of dust inside meteorites tell astronomers where in the solar system their parent asteroids are born. Scientists have known for a while there were two different types of meteorites, two families that had to form in different parts of the solar system. Some meteorites are very rich in minerals that contain water. Others are much more dry. Astronomers find both wet and dry meteorites on Earth. If these two types of space rocks form inside asteroids in different areas of the solar system, then it is evidence that something in the past jumbles them together. Scientists believe only one object in the solar system is powerful enough to mix together entire asteroid fields. Jupiter. As Jupiter migrated, objects were thrown to higher orbits, lower orbits, into the sun, out of the solar system. It really mixed things up. Around four and a half billion years ago, Jupiter is on its return journey away from the sun. The planet passes through separate regions of dry and wet asteroids. Jupiter's huge gravity flings these space rocks across the solar system. The mix of asteroids bombard the young Earth. It's possible that these frozen rocks bring with them the water that forms our planet's oceans. There was a time in the history of Earth when millions upon millions of asteroids rained down on the surface. Before, we didn't really understand why that would have happened. Now, we look back to Jupiter and think that maybe Jupiter is responsible. Scientists think it is possible that the asteroids that Jupiter flings at Earth bring more than just water. In 2015, NASA's New Horizons probe visits a strange body way out in the farthest reaches of our solar system. The cameras on the probe send back photos of Arrokoth, a misshapen object in the Kuiper Belt, a ring of billions of space rocks beyond the orbit of Neptune. Some of the images reveal that a strange red tar-like substance covers parts of the surface of the frozen object. Analysis reveals that these red areas contain organic chemistry. These chemicals are the raw materials for making amino acids, the building blocks of DNA. Some scientists think that the frozen water locked inside the asteroids that bombard the young Earth contain these seeds of life. Given all that Jupiter did to the solar system and its destructive power, it's quite a surprise to find that it may be what delivered the goods to Earth that were necessary for life to get started on our planet. NASA's Juno probe is unlocking the mysteries of the largest and most extreme planet in the solar system. The mission reveals that Jupiter is more alien and more powerful than astronomers ever thought possible. And that this gas megaplanet plays a leading role in shaping the solar system we see today. We always knew that Jupiter was extreme. 
But now with Juno flying above its beautiful clouds and peering deep into its heart, we have an idea of what makes this guy tick. Jupiter used to be just an, an interesting, beautiful, giant planet in the outer solar system. Now we understand that it might have influenced the beginning of life on Earth. 